Today I'm going to cover how to make this slow motion liquid burst in X particles and redshift. Let's get started. For this project, change the frames per second to 24 and extend the timeline to 120 frames. Create an X particle system in your scene. Select your emitter, click the object tab, and change the emitter shape to circle. Change the emitter plane to Y+, leave the disk radius to 50 centimeters, and the cone angle to 90 degrees. Click the ring only checkbox and select the emission tab. Set the emission type to shot, shot time to one frame and duration one frame. Set the count to 50,000 particles. Check full lifespan. I set the speed to 500 and the radius to 12 with a variation of nine. Under the display tab, change the editor display to circle. Now copy the emitter, up the shot count to 85,000, and the speed to 350. Copy the emitter again. Up the shot count again to 200,000 and change the radius to eight and variation to four. Add an XP scale modifier to your XP system. Alter the radius change parameter to negative 0.1 and increase the variation to 5%. Under the mapping tab, click add and under parameter, select scale change. Make sure that is mapped to age. Add a drag modifier to the scene and increase the strength multiplier to 400%. Lastly, add a turbulence modifier, set the noise type to standard, scale to 25% and strength to 12. Of course, all of these settings could be altered to achieve different looks, so play around a bit and get creative. Add a cache under Utilities and set the cache type to Internal Memory. Click Build Cache and wait for your cache to finish baking. Add an OVDB mesher under the Generator tab and drag your particle emitters under Mesh. Change the voxel size to 4 and the point radius to 2. Under the Filters tab, add a couple filters to smooth out your mesh. I added Laplacian, Mean, and Curvature. You can increase the iterations parameter to strengthen the effect of the filter. You should be getting a nice detailed mesh in your viewport. Now that we have our OVDB mesher settings dialed in, right click and select Current State to Object. Then we can turn off the X particle simulation for now and work on developing our materials with this static geometry that will be much more responsive to work with. Add a dome light to the scene and add your HDRI of choice to the texture field. Add a spotlight and adjust it to point at our geometry from an overhead angle. Before I create my material, I'm going to set up my post effects so that I'm viewing the render correctly. Enable post effects in your render view and turn on the photographic exposure effect. Adjust allowed overexposure to one. Create a new redshift standard material, add it to the OVDB mesher and our placeholder geometry. Open the material in the node editor. Select the standard material node, turn the base weight down to zero, change the reflection roughness to 0.1, Adjust the transmission weight to 0.9 and change the color to something in the yellow orange range. Bump up the dispersion to 9. Now we have a nice colored glass material with a slight dispersion effect for a little more detail. In the original render, the material had a thin gold edge too, so let's add another standard material to our network. Change the base color to something goldish. Turn the metalness parameter to 1 and the reflection roughness to 0. Add a Material Blender node and connect the transparent material to the base color. The gold material will plug into layer color 1. Add a Curvature node and plug it into the blend color. The Curvature node creates a black and white texture where the white areas are curved and the black areas are flat. The closer a color is to white, the more curved it is. Select the Curvature node and increase the contrast to 3. Under your output range, turn the min down to negative 0.1 and increase the max to 2. When you turn on the redshift render view, you should see a gold edge on your transparent material. Now hide your proxy geometry and turn on the X particle simulation. Open up the redshift render settings. Select the advanced tab. Under unified sampling, bump up the max samples to 2048. Deselect the random noise pattern checkbox and turn on the Altus single pass denoiser under the denoising tab. Now you're ready to render. 
If you found this video helpful, like and subscribe. I will see you in the next video.